I get excited about science and the idea of like doing this in the classroom too is to get other people excited about science and you know why it's really cool. I mean, to me, what makes chemistry cool is the reactions. It's all about you know, what are the different reactions? Why do, why do you know, why does hydrogen and oxygen come together? Right? Why does it form water? And how those different atoms come together to form new bonds. This is a process that takes lots of energy and a lot of chemistry uh, requires lots of energy. I mean, my background's in biochemistry. And the reason, you know, I consider myself a chemist who studies things like enzymes, because I want to know what's the actual chemical reaction that's happening. Uh, and the cool thing is that we can actually do experiments in the lab to kind of look at, you know, these bonds are actually breaking and these bonds are being formed. Uh, and that's just gets, you know, really, really fun and exciting. This uh, demonstration I'm going to do today is one we often do on the first day of class for Chem 101 or a general chemistry Chem 201 classes uh, because it's always a good refresher for the students to talk about the scientific method. They've heard about it since they were in elementary school, they heard about it in middle school, junior high, high school, uh, but still sometimes it's good to have a refresher, plus it's a lot of fun uh, to do it and the great part of being a chemist is I actually get to you know, make things explode at times. We've got the scientific method and one of the first things about the scientific method is we need a question or there's some sort of problem we want to solve. And so I'll ask them, it's like, what, what is you know, going on with these balloons? And the students will usually say, oh, they're floating in air or they're lighter in air. And I'll ask, you know, and I'll say, okay, great. Well, why, why would they be floating? You know, what, you know, what makes, you know, what makes that a lighter than air gas? How do you know that? And so they'll come up with different ideas and then I'll say, okay, great. We've made observations. Uh, we've got a problem. Like we, what's in these balloons? And so uh, one of the hypotheses, they'll always settle on either helium, because that's what they know really well, or hydrogen, which is explosive, right? Helium's a noble gas, hydrogen uh, is very reactive. Uh, and so that while the safest test, believe it or not, you know, the next step, step of the uh, scientific method is we have to test our hypothesis. So if I hypothesis that it's hydrogen, well, I now need to try to light these on fire. Okay, so that's my next step. So you just saw what happened to the first balloon, and so now we're going to watch the second balloon. And as it light on fire, look really closely to see what happens to the flame. You know, what color is it? What does it do? Looking at what we just saw, we can see that the flame really expanded out. Uh, and so when I'm out talking to students, I'll find them why would it have expanded out? And sometimes they'll say, oh, the explosive force. And that's certainly part of it. But the other big thing is oxygen, right? When things burn, they need oxygen. And so we're actually making water because we're reacting hydrogen and oxygen together. Uh, but oxygen's all in the room. And so the other two balloons, like the question there, the white balloons is, I put oxygen in those balloons with the hydrogen. And so I put them together in the same space, it shouldn't have to expand to burn. And so then I'll ask the students, what's your hypothesis? Is the reaction gonna be faster and louder or is it gonna be slower and quieter? Because it doesn't have to go as far. And so I'll go up there and go ahead and do that and we'll test that hypothesis that it's louder. So you saw in that balloon that certainly it was louder. Uh, it was much you know, faster and more, and you could see the, the it was more of a flash, uh, less spreading for sure. Uh, but again, for science, we need to repeat that experiment to make sure that it wasn't a fluke. And we can see once again that it was indeed louder. Uh, so we heard the big boom and we saw that bright flash of light as all that hydrogen was consumed with the oxygen and actually made water vapor. So this uh, demonstration here is one we call the methanol cannon. And this is a standard you know, water jug that's just been reinforced with some tape. So in this demo, I'm just gonna take some methanol, and so I'll do that now, and I'm just gonna spray it in here. And the idea is I just want, I'm gonna actually make methanol vapor. Okay. Now, why this demo works, because methanol vapor is very flammable, but also because we have kind of a limited oxygen supply in here. Okay. This is about 20 liters, which means I have about 10, or about 20% of that gas is oxygen that's in here. Uh, and so I would have, you know, um, about, what would that be? About 0.1 mole of O2 gas in here. Um, 
but I have this opening on here, which means it can suck in more oxygen. So that I start the reaction, it will consume all that oxygen that's in there initially, and then it will try to suck more in. And the idea is if, if we get the lighting just right, we'll actually capture a fireball in here and you'll hear this whooshing sound as it sort of sucks in more oxygen, which is really cool. So this is just, I'm pouring out any excess methanol. There shouldn't be a lot. So I poured out pretty much all of that. I'm gonna move this out of the way. So now uh, I should have just basically in there the atmosphere gas, nitrogen, oxygen, and then the uh, methanol. And then we're gonna light it on fire and see what happens. You could see the fireball as it kind of like lit and kind of like pulsed there and it sucked in more because it was sucking in to get more oxygen. Uh, as it was able to then consume, hopefully, most of the methanol vapor that was in there. You can see I poured out the methanol vapor ahead of time. And so what we can actually do now is that chemical reaction, when I burn methanol in the presence of oxygen, I actually make water. And this time it's not gaseous water like if I burned hydrogen balloons. This time it should actually be liquid water. So let's see if I actually made any liquid water in here. And if you look at that, right, it's not a lot of water in there. It's maybe about uh, five or six milliliters of water. But the cool thing is, if, if we wanted to do this quantitatively, uh, we could actually, you know, be really carefully remove the water. I could wait on a balance and get the exact weight of that water. And using really simple chemical stoichiometry, I can figure out how much oxygen I consumed from that. Because all the oxygen in this water was originally oxygen that was in the air. You know, science is, has always been part of the liberal arts. I mean, people, uh, you know, that aren't familiar with Hillsdale and all the liberal arts that we do here certainly may think liberal arts and say humanities. If we look back at the ancient liberal arts, right, they're doing physics, I mean, they're doing astronomy, they're doing, you know, arithmetic and math. When it comes down to it, right, it, it's all that search for truth. Science is our way of really understanding the physical world or the physical universe. And so science helps, you know, through the process of discovery, through experimentation, we can learn more about the world around us.